In 2003, and I'm actually going to give you a, a tiny bit of a clue here b- uh, before I uh, say, well, the question is, who was the creative team at this point in September 2003? Now, Dirty Dutch Mantel is not there until October, so I think he's the newest signing. Either very late September or early October, Dutch comes in, but just before Dutch comes in, who is the creative team? Russo was there um, when I came in. <clears throat> um Bob Ryder was there and would contribute, although it wasn't like a technical part of the creative team. But I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, Jeff uh, and later Dixie would go to Bob quite often because he'd been so much around wrestling. Uh, so he was sort of like an unofficial head to it. Uh, his dad, uh, Jeff's dad, who I'd never known prior to working in TNA. I knew of him, of course, but I, I hadn't ever met him and my experience in working with him, I remember I got Russo coming to me and telling me, hey, Jeff's dad's saying this or that. And what was being said was, like, if I say say my on cameras weren't till 5 o'clock and it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, <clears throat> I might lay down in the green room and take a nap. You know, just what else am I going to do? I could walk out there and sit up in the stands like everybody else and do nothing, or I could take a nap and I got a long day ahead. So, well, that somehow turned into... I was doing drugs when I'm taking a nap. And I said, well, have I, is there something that you guys wanted me to do that I missed? Because like, quite frankly, what I'm doing on my own time, when I'm not scheduled to be doing something with all due respect, everybody F off. This is my time. If I want to nap, if I want to go in and stick my finger up my rear end and pay somebody's uh drinking glass, that's for me to decide. And uh, concurrent to that, we had been working I had been working on a contract and the contract kept coming back in different ways. And we had just, me and Jerry Lynn had just been offered, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the lead, uh, uh, not coaches, but, uh, uh agent rules. I was going to be the heavyweight division, him the light, the X division. And my ex-wife, one of the few things she, she said that made sense with the business. Cause she really didn't care about wrestling. She said, uh, you know, one of the big sticking points up to that point of with the contract was merchandising. And she asked me, she said, well, if you're not going to be in the ring anymore, won't that affect your merchandise sales? And I thought, yeah, pretty good point. So I went back uh, to his dad, uh, Jeff's dad, and I said, uh, or I raised that point. I said, hey, you know, we're, we're almost there. I said, but because I'm going to be leaving the ring to do this, my merchandise sales are going to, and that was like something we'd worked on for months and months to get those numbers right. I said, as long as I could get something extra per week, you know, 300, 400, 500 bucks extra a week, just to offset the fact that I don't have to be selling merch anymore. And he dismissed me out of hand. He went like, Oh yeah, you know, I didn't think you were right for the business, but thank you. And Russo was standing right there. And I went to grab him by his, I was so pissed off. Because the question that I asked was a completely business question. It had nothing to do with, I ain't putting him over. Or, no, I won't lay down for that person. This is a, a complete, and this guy's a business, supposed to be a businessman. And Russo grabbed my hand as he turned like and, <laughs> and pulled it down. And, uh, you know, and, and it's just like that kind of relationship. Now, I later would get along great with him, uh, you know, and working with him. Because I think he saw that I was coming from much the same place that he'd always been in wrestling. And, uh, you know, there was a, uh, there was a push pull relationship there with him. And I think he did that by design, you know, like, again, having run Memphis as long as he did, and then would later go to the fed and you know, different places and, uh, you know, would, you know, be instrumental in the business for quite a many years. The, I'm, I'm certain that there was a whole lot of game gamesmanship going on there. Like, okay, this, well, if I walk away from it like that, you're not going to ask for any more money. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, it, it also, in full disclosure, coincides with the time that I am right nearing the point of getting off the Oxycontin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of different things going on at the time and not to be the least of which was my marriage was foundering. So when I would come to work here and close all that stuff out, put that in a box and leave that behind. And then walk into the building and go and do my 
duty as, as a, an on camera or behind the camera agent. Uh, it was impossible for me to just forget about those things that are going on at home right now and just come in here and be this guy. And, and I would try to keep that in a, in a package as much as I possibly could. But as a human being, there were times when it like little things like that would bring the fangs out and, uh, you know, ready to, to lash out. And, uh, you know, it, it, because of all those things going on once, it was not a very fun time in my career. You know, there was a you know, juggling a whole lot of balls, including at home. And, you know, like to me, I was suddenly not getting the, uh, the best part of what I always loved about wrestling was the camaraderie, uh, the downtime, the fun of being in the ring, all those things that made wrestling enjoyable to me suddenly had become a chore. It was like an anchor around your neck as you're trying to juggle this heavy anchor and all these other things are going on. And it'd be just like in, in the real world of being alive, you know, your phone would ring halfway through the day as this thing just happened. And it's some BS from home. Uh, you know, it would just turn itself up. Uh, so not a real enjoyable time. And I, my guess is, and I've never talked to Jerry about this because, you know, Jerry and I had always been close. You know, Jerry's such a good guy. Uh, you know, so that I would confide things in him and, you know, he'd give me his feedback and, and, you know, what he thought or whatever. And I would go to him and I'd say, like, oh, man, it's, just, it's got this text or this phone call. No, not a text them, but like a phone call. And, you know, it's this or that. And meanwhile, I got, you know, Jeff's dad over here saying that and, you know, and, and he was always sort of like the even keel, like could, you know, sort of taught me down a few pegs and, you know, like, like get it put under. And then that would last until the very next time that some other BS would, would, would rear its head. And uh, my guess is I, I, I'm going to have to ask Jerry, like what I was like to work with at that time, because I'm, I'm guessing I probably wasn't the easiest franchise to work with. Um, yeah. So all, all those things started to be like such a convoluted answer, but like that, that really in my head is how it is. There was like a whole lot, it's like being in the middle of a maelstrom of bullshit, mm. you know, and it just kept coming and kept coming And the places where you typically wouldn't get it, like in the wrestling dressing room or whatever, suddenly it's getting you there too. And then it just kept coming and it was like impossible, you know, at some point you just wanted to lash back, you know, and, and fight back. And thank God for it. Russo was that day I reached mm. out to grab Jeff, Jeff's dad, yeah, call her. Cause it was, uh, Little tense time in the franchise's life. 